Are you still using these types of boring buttons on your website? Then stop. Use this. 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 Types of button. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to transform your boring button into an attractive neon or glowing button using CSS. Hi, I'm Chandni, and welcome to CSS Nippets, the channel where you can learn the most relevant coding concepts in just a few minutes. Let's get started. First, create an index.html file. Structure your HTML by adding a button class. Once your HTML is ready, link it to your CSS file. In the style.css file, I wrote some basic properties and now I will style the button class. Set the position to relative and define the height and width. Next, set the background color and add a border radius of 10 pixels to give the button rounded corners. The outline and border are set to none. Also, define the font size with a color of white and font weight set to bold for the text. The cursor property is set to pointer to change the cursor to a hand when hovering over the button. Additionally, I applied a text shadow of 5 pixels to create a shadow effect and a box shadow to create a glow around the button. Now I added styles for the button colon colon before pseudo element. I set the content property to an empty string to create the pseudo element. The position is set to absolute. Then set the height and width to your preference, making it larger as needed. Add the left property at 50% and transform it in the X direction by negative 50% to center the pseudo element horizontally within the button. Then add the same for the button colon after pseudo element. To create the top bubble, I added a top property with negative 70% in the button colon colon before pseudo element. Similarly, to create the bottom bubble, I added a bottom property with negative 70% in the button double colon after pseudo element. To create bubbles at the top, I used the background image property to create a radial gradient background effect for the bubble and circular shape. The first gradient is a circle with one color covering 20% of the circle and the remaining 80% being transparent. The background size property determines the size of each gradient pattern, and the background position property positions the gradients within the button. To prevent the background from repeating, the background repeat property is set to no repeat. Then I added a second gradient, a circle with a transparent center covering 15%, followed by another color ring covering 15%, and the remaining 10% being transparent. Here I added 10 circular shape bubbles with different shapes and sizes, with different positioning. You can add as many shapes as you want. This creates a decorative background effect with radial gradients at specified positions and sizes. To add this type of bubble effect at the bottom of the button, I applied radial gradient backgrounds and positioned them appropriately. I added 10 circular shapes with different shapes and sizes, with different positioning. To animate these shapes or bubbles, I used the animation property with a one-second duration, linear timing function, and forwards direction. I defined a keyframes animation named Top Bubbles to animate the background position and background size of the bubbles. 
At the 50% keyframe, the background position is set to various coordinates, creating a dynamic spread of bubbles. At the 100% keyframe, the background position values shift again, and the background size is set to 0% 0% for each gradient, making the bubbles gradually disappear. This animation creates a floating and fading bubble effect for the button. Then I added an animation applied to the button colon colon after pseudo element with a duration of one second, using an ease in out timing and forwards to ensure the bubbles remain in their final state after the animation completes. I defined the keyframe's animation named bottom bubbles. At 50%, the background position values are set to various coordinates, arranging the bubbles in a specific pattern. At 100%, the background position values change again, and the background size for each gradient is set to 0% 0%, making the bubbles gradually disappear. When you click on the button, JavaScript is required to animate the bubbles, so add a script.js file in HTML and link it. In the JavaScript file, I selected the element with the class button and assigned it to the constant button. After that, I added an event listener to the button with the class button. When the button is clicked, the default behavior is prevented, and the bubble animation class is added to the button to trigger the bubble animation. After 1000 milliseconds, or one second, the bubble animation class is removed, ensuring the animation can be triggered again on subsequent clicks. This creates an interactive effect where the bubble animation plays each time the button is clicked. Then I added styles for the button class to enhance its interactivity. When the button is active, clicked, it slightly scales down to 96% of its original size using the transform scale property. When the button is hovered over, a reflective effect is created below the button using WebKit Box Reflect below one pixel linear gradient, which adds a subtle gradient reflection.